Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome. You are tuned into one of the best vlogs or blogs on YouTube, Big Mike's blog. Coming to you from coming to you from a humble home. I am Big Mike, obviously. I want um, welcome to the vlog if you if you're new to the channel. Um, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you do like my content, um, it will be very much appreciated. Um, so I tried doing this vlog yesterday. It was a little bit of a train wreck, to say the least. I wasn't able to get it uploaded, so I'm going to try again today. Hopefully, I'll be able to get it up for y'all. Um, but there, before I start the vlog, there's just two things I want to say before I start it. So, number one is I actually want to apologize. Um, in my last vlog where I talked about Black Lives Matter with the question mark, the last one I uploaded, I had misspoke in saying um, <clears throat> Greg Floyd's name. I kept saying George Floyd. Um, I did say Greg Floyd in between, but there's there's sometimes where I would say um, Greg, Flo um, Greg Lloyd. And I had that in my brain, so I kind of mixed up the name. So I want to apologize to, first off, Greg Floyd and his family, as well as to anyone if I offended anybody by me misspeaking on his name. I didn't mean to do that. That was not my intent, so I apologize for that. And number two, I want to shout out everybody who um, watched the vlog so far. Um, I just kind of want to pull it up and kind of see um, how many views I have. Because I actually had, like, I just checked it yesterday. I haven't checked it in a while, and I had, like, a lot of... A lot of views um, I have over 100 over 100 views and I had it up I've had it up for less than a week so um, that was pretty dope to say the least and um, I want to kind of thank a couple people who commented um, Jennifer O'Brien she had commented on it when she saw it so I thank you for that and um, rock me one unit entertainment as well um, they watched it as well so shout out to you guys for watching and commenting on it. I really appreciate it I know that, you know, many people get like thousands and thousands of views and all that. So people are probably watching me now saying, Michael, why are you making a big deal about 100 views? I'm like, what people don't understand is I'm a very, excuse me, I'm more of a mom and pop vlog. If I had to describe kind of my vlog, it's not for the masses. I don't just say fuck shit to get clicks and likes and all that other dumb shit. I, what I say on this, I mean, and I'm very passionate about what I say. So I don't just say shit just to get attention. So this isn't for everybody. It's not meant to be for everybody. So the fact that people have watched it and appreciate it and I've gotten a lot of feedback from a lot of people who watched it outside of YouTube and thanked me for posting it and they really appreciated it and all that. So um, thank you. I appreciate the love. So this vlog topic today, um, I'm kind of going to talk about like two or three different things in it, but it all kind of has a central theme involved in it. Um, of, like in terms of uh, just been what's been going on in the world, obviously, for those of you who don't know, if you do, you should know. But if you don't know, if you've been living under a fucking rock, I mean, there's been a lot of protests going on around not only America, Canada, all over the world in relation to the situation that happened with George Floyd uh, two weeks ago with him dying by the hands of the police. And also Breonna Taylor, um, Ahmaud Arbery and countless other people who have been dying at the hands of the police and all that other shit. So and also racist people in general. So there's been a route, there's been a lot of protesting and um, solidarity and, unif and unifying and all that stuff and, the, and, and, and racism and have racial equality. So which is something that I support. So uh, we had there's a protest here in Can um, in Toronto, actually, uh, a few weeks ago, um, on Saturday. Sorry, They're, they've actually had them earlier this month. They had some on Friday, this past Friday. They had some on Saturday and they, I think they had some yesterday as well. I had actually attended the one on Saturday at uh, Trinity Bellwoods. Uh, there was two different ones. There was one at Trinity Bellwoods, and then there was another one at, uh, I believe it was Dundas, uh, sorry, Nathan Phillips Square, which is further, I guess, further central of Toronto, um, downtown. So, um, I, like I said, I attended the one at Trinity Bellwoods. Um, it was a great turnout. A lot of people came, uh, some that I wasn't personally expecting, but I was very happy to see. Um, I ended up befriending a couple people there, um, so shout out to them. Um uh, I met them. They're actually from Hamilton. They actually came out uh, for the protest and all that had their signs up and everything. So it was really good to see. Uh, so basically kind of how that protest went, because I can give you a play by play because I was there. So if you hear anything different in terms of the one that I went to, specifically the Trinity Bellwoods one, if you're anything different than what I'm saying to you right now, then those motherfuckers are lying because I was there. So basically, in a nutshell, what happened was we all gathered at Trinity Bellwoods. Uh, the organizers kind of had a rounded us all up in the middle, um, in like a set, uh, on close to the sidewalk. Uh, they handed out masks and all that, and hand sanitizer for everybody. Uh, we took in they some of the organizers kind of spoke in terms of what the purpose of the protest was, which was obviously to voice their displeasure with um, what the treatment of innocent black people and stuff like that. Also talking about ending racism and um, kind of having us more of a unified front and racial equality for everybody. And um, after that. Uh, some other people spoke. We did. We took a knee for George Floyd. 
Um, and then we, they, uh, some of the organizers still spoke. And then from there, we basically walked. Um, we walked from basically Trinity Wellwoods, and then we kind of did a little bit of a route. And we went from Trinity Bellwoods all the way to Queens Park, and we were all chanting and and shouting. It was a the atmosphere was amazing, and there was a lot of people there. You know, I I had a chance to kind of look and survey kind of the amount of people that were there, and it was amazing to see. It was dope to see. Uh, from Trinity Bellwoods, we ended up making our way to like I said Queens Park. We met up there. Uh, we took another knee for George Floyd. Um, some other people spoke. Uh, some of the organizers spoke, and some other people that organized the event spoke as well. Uh, and they said it was a really, really good thing that they said. Um, also talking about, and they also were talking about how Canada has racial problems as well. Um, so that's one of the reasons why they decided to organize this whole rally. Um, a white lady, I think her name was Sherry, if I'm not mistaken. She came up and spoke and um, she talked about her white privilege and talking about how that I'm acknowledging it. And I'm trying to make equal, have things equal for you guys as well, because it's wrong what's happened to you guys. And I'm with you guys. And I support you guys. And I thought it was such a powerful thing because you could hear the pain in her voice, too, because she just felt so shitty about how, you know, things have been going on in the news and everything. So um, it was just a great thing to see, you know. Um, and I remember I actually had a chance to talk to some of the people that were there because um, I was curious. You know, I I'd went there kind of very jaded by the turn, like how the turnout would have been prior and when I saw the amount of people that were there and just saw the different races, like there was white people, black people, Asian people, Spanish people, uh, Indian, you know, there was trans, there was um, the LGBTQ community came out, um, natives came out, you know, people from different socio socioeconomical classes came out. Like it was just a great thing to see. So I had asked like a couple of white people when I got there, I said, um, I got this one, asked this one white guy, I said like, why did you come out? I was just curious. And he, and he looked at me with this big old smile and said, I love everybody. You know, I, I came out because I love everybody and I want to, and I want this shit to end and you guys deserve as much equal treatment as I deserve. And I was, I smiled. I was like, that's dope, man. I really appreciate that. And I talked to this other older, much older white guy, not like really old, but like an older white guy. And he said, it was the right thing to do. It was the right thing to do for me to come out. And you know, this shit needs to end and I'm sick of seeing it. So I came out because it was the right thing to do. And I thought that was a beautiful thing. And I finally then went to go talk to Sherry, who did, who spoke earlier. And I gave her a big hug. And I said, thank you for saying what you said. Because I'm it, it, because in order for us to move this shit forward, white people have to acknowledge this shit. And be like, okay, I have this privilege. But I'm for solidarity for you guys. And I'm trying to, and we're trying to do, and I'm going to do my part to end this and help you guys have some fairness. And I love that. You know, I thought it was great, you know, and, you know, I remember, like I said, I said it. And when I got there that I was surprised by the turnout and how many people showed up And this one black girl had asked me, why are you so surprised? And I didn't know at the time I couldn't answer why at that moment. I didn't really know. But then when I had a chance yesterday to reflect why, I think the reason why I was so surprised was just the simple fact that I think like most of us, we consume social media on a regular basis. In some cases, more people consume it than other people. But And I think I have consumed, consumed so much social media and seeing so much of the negative and people saying stupid ass shit, which I'm going to touch on as well, that I felt like that because of that, there was probably more people like that than people that actually are supportive of the movement. And I was glad that Saturday I was proven wrong, that are, there are a lot of people, especially around the city of Toronto, that support the movement and support racial equality and support you know, holding these complete, it's accountable and all that type of shit. And I love it. I absolutely love it. You know? Um, so I was glad that I was proven wrong. You know, I was really glad I was proven wrong in that regard. Um, and I'll definitely attend any other rallies or, um, functions that they, um, will organize as well. You know, I actually did an interview with, um, there was these guys that were, they're actually starting their own podcast, these two black guys. So, um, I ended up talking to them cause they asked me about how to, how can we, um, and racial injustice and stuff like that. And they also asked me if I had dealt with any racism in my life. And I kind of told them those situations as well. So it was just a really good atmosphere. Um, really good atmosphere. Um, got to talk to a lot of different people. It was really cool. So definitely, um, I, because again, I honestly, to be honest with you, I, was, I wasn't sure if I was even going to go on Friday, on Saturday. I had thought about it. The fr I had found out about it the Friday night. And I was talking to a friend and I said, I might go. I'm not sure. And then I thought about it some more. And then I said, you know what? Okay, I'm going to wake up on Saturday and I'm just going to decide right then and there if I'm going to go. And literally when I woke up on Saturday at 9 a.m., I said, I'm gonna just going to go. 
So I got myself organized and then I just went and I honestly don't regret it. I would have honestly regretted it if I didn't go. So I'm glad I went. Um, can't say that about the other protests that happened at <laughs> Dundas Square. Um, unfortunately, um, at Dundas Square, and there was an also a rally at, at London, Ontario. There were a couple of uh, people that were not for the movement that were trying to, like, there was the, so the one here at Dundas Square, or sorry, Nathan Phillips Square, I'm sorry. Um, there was a gentleman who took it upon himself to dress in blackface and go to the rally. Now, luckily, nothing happened to him physically. He didn't get beat up or his head bust or anything like that. He just was, he, but he was arrested, which was good. Um, but in my mind with that situation, I just feel like he just wanted to get punched in his face. Um, and then the other situation I heard about in England, sorry, not England, sorry, London, Ontario, um, there was a gentleman who went there and I think he was just saying a lot of hateful things, a lot of hateful things. And, uh, those people in London weren't as, uh, showing as much restraint as the ones here. Uh, they ended up tackling him and fighting him and stuff like that. Um, and basically he was saying that I, I thought I was coming, I wanted to come here to start a dialogue and all this stuff, but you're trying to spew hate speech. So I want to talk about those two instances because it's going to also segue into my other point because I've been seeing a lot on social media that people are lumping the protests with the rioting and the looting and they making, they're making it seem like they're all one thing, which I'm here to tell you that they're not, okay? What people need to understand and what I've realized myself is that there's the protesters who are generally trying to have a peaceful protest to voice their displeasure about what's going on. And then there's fuck sticks who are rioting and looting and doing stupid shit like dressing in blackface to cause confusion and to fuck with shit. You know, people like, and again, there's some white people who are like, what's wrong with blackface? Why is blackface so offensive? Well, I'll explain to you in a Cliff Notes version of why it's offensive. I did some research on this yesterday because I knew about this, but I wanted to kind of give a Cliff Notes, the best version or the simplest version I can as to why it's offensive to black people. So after slavery had ended and all that and the civil rights movement kind of was going on, um, black actors were not allowed to be in like actors, like there was not, there's only white actors. There were not black actors back in those times. So white actors would dress in blackface depicting plantation slaves as well as free slaves, okay? And these were not, these slaves were not shown, and these people doing blackface were not showing these black people in a positive light. They were basically depicting and reinforcing the idea that blacks are inferior. So that is the reason why it's offensive. So to any white person who stumbles on this vlog and is wondering why blackface is offensive, I just fucking told you, so don't fucking do it, okay? Simple. Don't do it. If you want to dress up as something else for Halloween, dress as something else. Do not do fucking blackface. And if you do, or if you are bold enough and stupid enough to do blackface, make sure you don't do it in, around any black people because you might get your head bust. Not advocating for it. I'm just saying that might happen. So don't be surprised if your head get bust for doing it. So that dude, in my opinion, who came to the rally on Saturday in blackface, he was strictly doing that to get punched in his face. Because then, guess what? The narrative is going to change. And then people are going to say, you see that? They're protesting, apparently, but they're out there damaging buildings. And they're fighting each other. And they're causing violence. How is that helping their cause? They're really, it's not even helping their movement and all this other bullshit. That is going to, the narrative is going to change. And guess what? It has changed. Because I feel like more people don't really, there's more people that are talking bullshit about the protest than actual, the, the positive pieces about it which is frustrating for me to see. And again, I can talk about the protest because I fucking went. So I could tell you that nothing on our end happened. And as a matter of fact, the organizers were very strict in saying, do not riot, do not loot, do not do any bullshit. We are doing this as a peaceful protest. Simple. And, keep, and make sure that we're all together because I don't know what those other organizers are doing and I don't know what, who those people are, so let's just keep this all unified. So how in the fuck does that all of a sudden constitute this damaging a property? Like, we're not damaging nothing. We're trying to voice our concerns. And I think that's the biggest point. Like, we need to separate the two. The same, re the same rationale that some people want to say, well, it's not all these cops that are doing it. It's just the bad apples. You're right. There is. But two points to that. 
like I said, there's the protesters and the looters. We need to separate those. And I will say this about to that argument, because I hear that all the time. Yes, I'm not sitting here saying that all cops are bad. Because I actually, as a matter of fact, I posted a video on my Facebook of a cop in Michigan, this white cop, going on, basically talking to the, a group of protesters saying that we are with you guys, we support you guys, we're here to protect you guys, and we're not for that fuck shit and nonsense that happened in Minnesota. Okay, that's crap. And we're, hit, we're with you guys, we're going to keep you guys protected, because that's what we're here to do. And I thought that was great, and I posted that shit. So I am not naive enough to think that every single cop is bad. However, I will say this. If you're a good cop and you see your cop, your cop friend or your colleague or whatever doing fuck shit and you're not going to hold them accountable and you're not going to say nothing, you're just as culpable as that motherfucker doing it. You're just as culpable. So you're not going to get a pass from the people if you're just going to allow that shit to happen. Because how are you going to then expect the the people to cooperate with you and to snitch, let's say, quote unquote, on people or to cooperate with the police when you're not going to do the same and hold your own people accountable. I always thought that was weird how cops have this code, but you expect other you expect the people, the the citizens not to follow a code. Come on, bro. What the fuck you talking about? You don't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? And again, I have and I've and I've said this to people and I've checked people on this because, you know, I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, like, for example, I had one person like last week when the um, Blackout Tuesday movement was going on or whatever. And I understand both both arguments of for and against and I respect both. The reason why I posted Blackout Tuesday was for the simple fact that I wanted a unified front on something. I'm so sick. I'm so fucking tired of so much division it's good to see that people from all different backgrounds, races, colors, creeds, religions, all that are standing together on a united front. And that's something that I personally want to be a part of, and which is why I did it. I had a friend who we had a really good dialogue and conversation. So I don't want to I'm not trying to sit here and throw her under the bus at all because I'm not. She wasn't sure if she wanted to do the Blackout Tuesday because in her mind, she didn't want it. She wasn't sure about it on what it stood for. And she didn't want to just follow what everyone else was doing because there's a lot of people that are posting shit and talking about it, but they really don't support the movement, which I a thousand percent agree. And I said that to her. I totally agree with you. And I'm going to bring up that point a little bit later as well. What I said to her is this, and I'm going to say this to any motherfucker who is watching this video. If you don't support, the, like I said, I told her in terms of the Blackout Tuesday, if you don't want to post anything for that, then don't. No, don't problem. No problem. There's no skin. Out, there's, I'm not going to be upset or feel some type of way if you don't post anything. If you want to post something, post something. That's not going to change my friendship with you. However, what you need to do and what everyone else needs to fucking do is you need to figure out where you stand on this issue. Either you're for it or you're against it, because I am so fucking irritated and sick and tired of seeing people comment and talk fuck shit about, well, you know, yeah, George Floyd, it sucks that he died, but he already had a criminal record and a rap sheet. What the fuck does that do with a cop having his knee on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds? What the fuck does his criminal record have to do with that? Are you fucking dumb? You make any fucking sense. And I'm sorry, people. I know people are going to be like, oh, Michael, why are you so angry about it? You shouldn't be swearing and this and that. No, I am sick and tired of people saying, oh, well, black people need to turn the other cheek and all that. So you can, what, slap me in the other cheek? I'm tired of turning the other fucking cheek. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm not going to go out and beat people up and do any of that shit. I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to hold motherfuckers accountable. And I'm going to call motherfuckers out who want to sit there and play both sides of the argument because I'm a free thinker and I'm not for the leftist liberal media trying to tell me how to think. And I'm not going to let Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat tell me how to think because I'm so fucking smart. You're a fucking buffoon. So, so my thing is, if you want to act like that, stay your buffoon, your buffoon ass over there. Because at this point, you got to pick a side. I could see that there's some case, and there's some situations where, yes, there's a middle ground that you can go down. There's gray in a black and white issue. I totally agree with that. For example, the coronavirus. I'm more in the middle. I'm not all the way on the right. I'm not all the way on the left. I am somewhere in the middle. And there's nothing wrong with that. But with this issue, when it comes to police abusing their power and killing innocent black people you're either for that or you're against it or them doing harm to anyone of color 
You're either for that or against that. I don't want to hear nothing about, well, what about, what about black on black crime? You know what I re researched about black on black crime? What I noticed? And again, these stats can be skewed. So depending on how you view those stats, you could skew it any way you want. But what I tend to just notice with crime of when it involves race, usually black people do 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 kill black people. That is very true. But you know what I also noticed? That white people tend to kill white people more than any other race. Latinos tend to kill Latinos more than any other race. Asians tend to do the same thing. You tend to kill in the proximity that you fucking live in. Foreign thought, I know. I know that just blew my mind too. So that stat about black on black crime is fucking stupid. Is it a problem? Absolutely, it's a problem, okay? And no one is saying that all lives don't matter. Every single person that went to that protest that I went to on Saturday, their lives matter. Every white person, every Asian person, every black person, every um, Latin person, every Indian person, whether you're trans, straight, whatever, whatever LGBT community, whatever socioeconomical class you're involved in, your life matters. No one is saying that. But... When a black man or woman or anyone of color, particularly, but let's focus on black specifically, are murdered by the hands of the police and the police are not held accountable for those crimes, you're basically saying that our lives don't matter. But in the same breath, you would convict a black person based off of shoddy, if not minuscule evidence. You're basically saying that our lives don't matter. Of course your life matters. It's just like I compare it to a neighborhood of, let's say if there's a neighborhood with 20 houses there, okay? There's a neighborhood of 20 houses. One of them is on fire. The fire department comes to put out that fire. Are they watering every fucking house in the neighborhood? Or are they putting out the fire on the, the house that has the fire and trying to put that out? But all of our houses matter. No shit, numbnuts. Of course they fucking matter. But we're focusing on the house that's on fire, trying to put that fire out. And not only put that fire out, make sure it doesn't spread. And make sure we nip this shit in the butt so it doesn't happen again. That is what the whole movement is for. And me explain that. That sounds stupid, right? Why would you walk, put, why would you put, um, have a fire hose on all the houses when they're not on fire? Yeah, right? Because that, that sounds silly, right? That sounds stupid, right? Yeah, just like when you dumb, dumb fucks decide to go and say all lives matter or blue lives matter. You're a fucking idiot. Okay? You're a fucking idiot. But I got fit bigger fish to fry at this point, to be honest with you. Because it's not even... I've kind of... And I'm, I'm very... This, even saying this, people are going to be like, wow, Mike, that's fucked up. But I have gotten to a point where I have accepted that there are racist white people out there. There are, ra there are racist white people out there. I know that there are a lot that aren't, that there, there are good, that, that there's some that aren't, and that's good. But I know that there are a fair majority of them that are. Okay, so I can differentiate between the two. Now, where I have a beef right now, and where I'm going to call these motherfuckers out and I don't care, because I have been seeing a groundswell of black people going on Facebook or YouTube and spreading on their platform, talking about how the Black Lives Matter movement is bullshit or it's the Black Lives Matter movement is the liberal agenda or there's like, or um, this shit stained Candace Owens had the audacity and nerve. And I didn't watch her video, so I'm not going to sit there and act like I watched it because I refuse to watch anything that stupid fucking moron posts on her, any of her social media outlets. Had the audacity and nerve to say that George Floyd was a criminal, he's not a martyr, but I hope that those cops go to jail. You're a fucking moron. And to all you fucking coon-ass motherfuckers, you all are a bunch of morons. And you know why you're morons? For this simple fact. Do you really think, and I'll ask a question. And to you coon-ass motherfuckers who are watching this and you're so outraged that I said this, let me pose a question to you and then you feel free to comment. It seems that you're so fucking smart. Do you honestly think that if you were to go to a certain section off area in America where there's racist cops or racist people in general, do you honestly think that they would embrace the way you think, you stupid motherfucker? Do you really think that you're immune to a cop seeing you and profiling you and killing you or doing some harm to you 
You think because you're sitting there saying, oh, the Trump is doing good and all this other fuck shit that I've seen. Do you really think that that gives you a fucking pass? It doesn't give you a fucking pass, you moron. If nothing else, they might kill you. Even if, let's say, they don't kill you. They probably smile up in your face and tell you how dope you are. But behind your back, they'll probably call you a dumb nigger. And, that, and that's all you they'll see you as. Listen, and let me make something very crystal clear. I've been in the social services for seven years. I love helping people. Every person. Every client that I see, I don't care what race they are, how, what, what old they are, like, um, where they are mentally, emotionally, whatever the case may be. My purpose and what I do is I try to help every client the best way that I can. Okay, so I want to make sure I preface that. And as much as I want equality and everything for everyone, and that's what we're all fighting for, I understand that I'm a black man first. And unfortunately, as much as I would love to say that it's not about race and I don't see color because I'm colorblind and all this other bullshit, most people do not see me in that light. And I've accepted this. As as shitty as it sounds, me saying that I've accepted, I have accepted this. Okay? I've accepted it. Because when I was younger, I would go on the subway and old white ladies would see me and clench their purses or give me a dirty look because they think I'm trying to rob them. I've been called a nigger numerous times in this city because I know everyone's like, oh, Toronto's not like that. You're living in a fucking dream world if you think Toronto's not like that. Okay? So... As much as I'm going to stand for everybody else and I want equality for everyone else, I'm always going to stand for my people. And if you're a black person and you're not with us, then stay your stupid ass over there with those other motherfuckers. Period. Because I, quite frankly, I don't want you around if you're not for the movement. And, we, and I need to say this because it's not being said. And, I, and I'm tired of seeing these motherfuckers sitting there talk this bullshit. I watched a video on Facebook yesterday of a Black Lives Matter movement um, rally in Chicago, and this black chick sitting there saying that the Black Lives Matter movement is bullshit, and all these and all the Black Lives Matter um, protesters are a bunch of attention whores, and she went on this rant for eight or nine minutes. You know what I'm saying? And it's disheartening to see. It's frustrating to see. It bothers me to see it. You know, or I see people talk about, oh, well, what would Martin Luther King say during a time like this? Martin Luther King wouldn't stand for this. You know what Martin Luther King said about protests? He said that protests are the cries of the unheard. So if you guys don't want us protesting and you have such a big fucking problem with that, maybe you should listen to what we're saying instead of us protesting. Because you guys, it's funny that you guys that are out there talking about how the protesting is bad and all this bullshit, but you'd be the same motherfuckers that the Maple Leafs lost in the seventh game of the Stanley Cup would burn the city, half the city down in a heartbeat. And if I'm lying, try me. Let the Maple Leafs go to the Stanley Cup in the next couple of years. And let's say they lose in game seven. Half the city would burn. And if I'm lying, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. I dare anybody who watches this video, who's a Maple Leaf fan, that's going to sit there and with a straight face and tell me that this city wouldn't burn to a crisp if the Maple Leafs lost. And that's just angry fans. But we're protesting actual racial inequality and bullshit, and you motherfuckers have a problem with that all of a sudden. So miss me with that. So anyway, on that note, I'm going to sign off because I might go a little bit longer. <laughs> Uh, but I want to thank everyone for watching this. Um, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if, let's say, you watch this and you're so turned off by what I said, um, as the great John Boyea said of Star Wars fame, suck a dick. Because I, really I don't really care if you have a problem with what I said. Because I look at it this way, and I'm going to sign off after this. Anything that I have said in my last vlog on Black Lives Matter with a question mark and this vlog should not offend anybody. It should not offend anyone. Because... I am simply saying that all you racist cops, you racist people, and you coon-ass motherfucking black people who are not for this movement of racial, equ racial equality and eradicating and end racism, if you're not for that movement, then simply put, you can go fuck yourself. Period. And I stand by every word I said. So if that offends you and you're so hurt and offended by the language, then you're a fucking moron. Because what you should be offended about is the fact that all like most of these cases that have gone on, the Breonna Taylors, the George Floyds, and all those ones, and, and countless other ones that I haven't mentioned, 
a lot of these cops have not even been convicted. That should offend you. That should bother you. Or that black men are incarcerated based off of shoddy bullshit evidence. That should offend you. Not anything I said. Because if anything I said that offends you, you're a fucking moron. And I'll leave it at that. So thank you guys for watching. It's Big Mike signing off. Um, stay tuned for some more content. I'm going to hit y'all up with some other stuff down the road. But for now, peace and love. I'm out.